Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here and welcome to my brand new Football Manager 2016 Let's Play series and you can see the club I've decided to go with is Ingolstadt in the Bundesliga. Newly promoted team this season to the Bundesliga as well. They're not doing terrible in real life, about mid-table. So yeah, they're doing all right. They're a team on the up and up as well. I'll go talk about the club very, very soon. Uh, quick shout out to Wolfie once again for the thumbnails on all my series as well, including this one now. Uh, great work. Uh, go check out his channel as well. Makes football manager videos, lots of football manager videos. So make sure you subscribe and support him. Also, a new skin to debut this series with as well. I'll go into the preferences. So it's Vitrex 16 2.1. I actually downloaded a previous version of this uh, Vitrex, but I didn't like it for whatever reason. Uh, now on the 2.1 version, um, yeah, it's pretty good. So if you want to download it, as always, the link will be in the description, and I haven't really made too many changes, just a couple of the like the profile panels, uh, but I'll leave the default skin um, background, it's on standard there, and it would be the first one, you can change it if you want by clicking, and it goes to the next filter, as you can see, but I will basically go in, um, you can see uh, we've got a personal message as always I already like skip the meetings all that kind of stuff as I just started up this save right now you can see my wage of course the normal year contract you get obviously you've got to play for a new contract as well uh, where are we going to go to the confidence so we can see what's the expectations but you'll probably know uh, this is going to be a hard challenge so we'll go to the competitions and we'll go to the summary you can see the board are satisfied but we have to go into competitions and then go details on the Bundesliga to see the minimum expectation, which is the minimum expectation is that the team fight bravely against a relegation from the Bundesliga this season. So this is not going to be easy. We're expected uh, by the media to finish 17th. As you can see, that's second last, actually. Uh, it's only 18-team league opposed to 20, like in the Premier League and a lot of other leagues. So... Uh, it's going to be a challenge, obviously, being a newly promoted team. But as I mentioned, they're about mid-table in real life. Um, at the time of recording this, I think I checked before, they're about 11th. So, yeah, about mid-table uh, in there. I guess you could almost say lower mid-table if it's an 18-team league, um, as it's still pushing towards the bottom. But still, um, they're avoiding the relegation zone for now, which is really good. And, of course, before I forget, I want to say uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you guys. It's just that time of the year. It's just a happy time. I don't know how about uh, how about you guys are feeling, but I just feel happy all the time around <laughs> yeah this time of the year. It's always it's always a happier time, spending more time with family. Uh, so yeah, I definitely want to do that a bit more in general, um, opposed to just staying on the internet all the time. Uh, it's healthy and probably something I want to push on to do. But uh, yeah. I just wanted to say that to you guys. Um, it's a great time, and I hope you have a safe Christmas and New Year. Uh, definitely, um, I wanted to project that to you guys as well. Hopefully, have a safe time and happy time, uh, most definitely. But today, I'm basically just going to cover our squad, and maybe the under-19s and the reserve squad, see if there's anyone decent in there. I haven't checked out my whole team. I've seen a few players here and there, but not too much. We've got Australian in Matthew Leckie. Hopefully, yeah, he looks all right for this year's game. But uh, we seem to have two goalkeepers that will be decent for the first team. If you check out their ages and their values and their abilities, um, as you can see there. But the first guy, Ramazan Ozkan, he's a 30-year-old. Uh, he's He looks okay, but he's not spectacular. His best attribute is kicking. Of course, kicking is an important attribute to have for a goalkeeper, but for me, it's not the most important. I'd rather have higher one-on-ones and everything like that, but they're not terrible attributes for him. He doesn't have too many lower ones, but they're probably not as high as I'd want them to be for a starting goalkeeper. He's listed as a backup as well, isn't he? Yeah, you can see squad status backup. And the 24-year-old in Nyland from Norway, he's the first-team goalkeeper. But the other guy may expect to start some games. Uh, this guy looks all right. For 24 years old, he's obviously got room to improve for a goalkeeper, even though it doesn't really see... You can't really see it in the uh, reports. Like, potential and ability is about the same. And also, my assistant. <laughs> he looks to have 18 judging ability. That's fantastic. Usually, you don't get a good assistant manager that can judge well. Obviously, still has poor handling, so I just checked that out before, so working on that with him because uh, that's a really low attribute. That's very troubling. Uh, those three, I look at handling one-on-ones and reflexes, three really important attributes. Of course, other attributes are important, but yeah, they're three I find important. Uh, of course, reflexes, one-on-ones look all right. 
but hopefully can progress his handling. Uh, next up from Kazakhstan, actually, uh, we've got Konstantin Engal. He's 27. His ability doesn't look the best. And when you look at his attributes, he doesn't look good at all. And he's a guy that I look at and he could be, I'll say, oh, he can play a lot of positions. But if he could only play one position, I probably couldn't see a future for him at the club. And he's not really, really old anyway. See, either footed and you see his positions where he can play, that all looks uh, fine and everything like that, doesn't it? But he is not a great player. He's a contender to sell. And especially, I'm not sure if you noticed, but our transfer budget is zero. Zero. And you look, wage budget, 12K. Uh, maybe you have room for one free signing and maybe some loan signings. <laughs> it just really, really depends as I survey the options. Uh, and also, again, um, before we yeah, check out more players, I just want to show the club. Um, this is something really important. This is like a new club almost. The year founded, 2004. So it's it's like 11 years old, the club. 11 years old. And I want to show you the facilities as well. Um, sure, good training facilities. Compared to the others, I'm happy that the training facilities is good and not lower than that. Average youth facility is a bit lower. So as this kind of team, we're not probably going to be relying on youth. We've got to be relying on decent signings and junior coaching, adequate junior coaching. And of course, we don't have a lot of money, so we can't spend a lot on it. Uh, youth recruitment. It's only basic. That's a really, that's one of the lowest ratings, isn't it? Basic youth recruitment. So that's something why I chose this kind of team. That's something you want to build. Uh, last few years, well, I've done like a save like Manchester United and probably why I finished off with Arsenal in the first season. It's like they're already, they're ready-made clubs and you got to improve this team to be that kind of level. Their basic youth recruitment, we're not going to be getting quality youth players through, like quality regions. So that's what makes it a real challenge. And just that's part of the club. And the finances as well, just $5 million. Even look at the profit made this season. That's because they just got promoted. So it's going to be very, very hard and more challenging. But I would like to think, yeah, that's what it'll be. What, what will make it interesting. Just one of the few things for you guys. But the good thing is we have a few young players that are first teamers. That doesn't matter if the youth level is a bit lower. Because we still got good training facilities. That's why I was happy about that. Oh, yeah, good. It's not, yeah, one of those lower ones. It's still all right. So someone like a Danny DaCosta uh, came through the Leverkusen Youth Academy, actually. I remember I would have done, oh, back in like FM11 or FM12 before I started YouTube. I remember, yeah, Danny DaCosta. In one, I think FM12, he was a more younger player, obviously, um, like three or four years ago now. Uh, when he was maybe 17, 18, he was a high potential player in the game. And then I think maybe the last couple of years he dropped off. I'm not, I wasn't sure because if you look at his appearances, uh, he was obviously, yeah, loaned out to this team. But I guess he's impressed uh, recently um, as they got promoted. Uh, so maybe got bumped up in his attributes and potential, just judging off his report anyway for a Bundesliga team. Yeah, he looks to have yeah good potential um, to be a Bundesliga right back. So he's going to be this level. So that's good to uh, be excited about. Uh, if anything, his mentals, I like to be a bit higher. But again, there are uh, their attributes, the mental attributes just improve gradually as a player gets older. But it's not the best, if I'm uh, being honest, technically and physically, though. Uh, yeah, looks really great for his age. Uh, next up, we're going to move into another defensive player, Robert Bauer, who can play a lot of positions. Again, very young, only 20, this lad is. Uh, can play defensive midfield. There's only one thing I notice with this skin. Sometimes the roles and duties don't show up because uh, default, another thing shows up there. It's like reports comparing players. So I'm not sure if it's like not used to that panel being there or it will just sort itself out as we go. But anyway, because sometimes it shows up. Uh, he can play a lot of positions. He's actually more of a defensive midfielder than centre mid, and you can tell that, yeah, maybe from his height as well. Only 183 centimetres does seem more of a midfielder compared to a defender, but he can still play that role because he's decent defensively. Uh, next up, uh, he's 25. Uh, there's Benjamin Hubner. I think that's how you say Hubner. Not really sure because he's got those funny things on top of the U. I'm not funny. I'm just, yeah, those little uh, characters, I think they're called or something like that. But anyway, uh, yeah, he is a uh, center back and he, another guy who can play a lot of positions and he's he looks good. This guy looks good. He's a good age, 25. But look at the physicals. 
he's really good. He's strong and he's good in the air. I guess he's a bit slower, but 12 pace hopefully is decent. But yeah, the eight and nine acceleration and agility doesn't look the greatest. But marking a 15 and tackling 15, if those were 16, like one more attribute up, I'd be really excited about him. Uh, just because it's like the next color it changes to pretty much. Uh, but yeah, he's a good player. Uh, he looks like he'll be all right. He's actually wanted by a club, Hertha. So obviously a German team. So we're going to see if any offers come in. Don't forget we have no money. So I've got to be willing. I've got to be up to yeah listen uh, to offers uh, because maybe I'll have to do that. I uh, just got to see. So this guy uh, from France, uh, he's all right. Uh, what's his name? It's uh, Breguier. Uh, big guy. Uh, <laughs> I really don't know how to say his name. I'm going to have to Google it a bit later, but you can leave in your comments as well. Uh, but yeah, French names can be a bit troubling, but another very good physical center back, but he is let down technically. Like the tackling 12, marking 13, probably not good enough, but it makes up in the heading area. So he's a guy who's going to be good in the air with the strength and obviously the aerial ability. Uh, jumping reach, good balance, so he could be a decent centre back. Just yeah, um, he's tackling and marking. Maybe we'll let him down. I guess we've got to wait and see. We've got to give him a chance. Next up, there's Roger from Brazil. Another guy. I thought he could be centre back, but then he's got defensive midfield and centre mid in his positions. Uh, foreign. He's a non-EU player. I was just wondering what's the rules. I don't think there was rules last time I checked um, in the Bundesliga. Maybe for the cups only uh, for the local cup. Not the actual league. I don't think there's foreign restrictions. But yeah, it says that for a reason anyway. Another stronger player. Strong and quick. And he's still, he's still got the tackling and marking 15. He's 29. It's an interesting age. Because I've never really heard of him too much before. Obviously, yeah, he was playing in the league below. Um, he was signed a few seasons ago. So for 160k. So that looks like a great signing. Considering his value now. Went up a couple million. So... He looks like, if you play him in that defensive midfield role, oh, it looks great. He's quick, he's fast, can tackle, marking's decent, work rate's good. Uh, yeah, he can play the role. Uh, I thought if this was maybe like FIFA, he could be a beast centre-back with that pace and strength and still decent defensively. Uh, maybe he still could be good. Depends, yeah, uh, what roles we could use for him. But defensive midfield, uh, he could be all right and possibly we could use him. Next up, there's Marvin Matip from Cameroon. He's played one game for them, uh, not too much. He just looks like an average center back. Like he's got none of the important attributes. If you take away pace, I guess, like actual defensive attributes that are above a 16. Again, talk about the next attribute color up, but he's still, he's got them at like 14s and 15s. So if he's confident and he's happy and all that kind of stuff, like he is right now, superb, I think he could play well. So that's, uh, that's an okay thing. Um, I think he'll be all right. Then there's Max Christensen, youngest lad in the first team, but he doesn't have the highest potential in the team. So that's something you've got to note. So I'm not really sure. He's unavailable for the next match. Not sure. Just, yeah, probably suspended or something. Uh, has he played any games in real life? He played about four in the previous season and uh, played 17 at Rostock. Um, well, that was in the same season. He moved in January. Uh, for 180k, what's his potential like though? I'm not sure how high it will be. I'd like he says, yeah, I'd like to think he'll be a Bundesliga player in the future. Report. I just thought, yeah, if it's not at least four stars, he might not be that level. He's got some decent mentals, but lower in some other areas. Tackling 14 is not bad, but you got to have a lot more standout attributes uh, for this level of football. Obviously, a very competitive league it is. Uh, but yeah, we just have to see because again, he may have to be in the first team if we can't make a lot of signings. And to make a lot of signings, we'd have to sell someone. We don't really have someone worth of selling for a lot of money anyway. So it's going to be a tough one. Tobias Levels. He is 28. Uh, years old, uh, you can see uh, there, uh, he's got good stamina, so I reckon he's a guy who could play a lot of games, um, like who else do we have in that right back position, we've got a few, like the Danny DaCosta, uh, so yeah, um, obviously one of his biggest things is his teamwork as well, work rate, that goes with that, so it's not too bad, uh, he, again, he's not too amazing, what, tackling 15 is good, but marking 13, yeah, not the greatest, uh, he's like a guy that will play his role, but he won't be amazing, so it's something I, I might say we need a, another signing at right back. For, but for me, Danny DaCosta, he's got that position to himself probably for 10 seasons. <laughs> so if you think about it that way, yeah, um, he'll be uh, that position. Uh, but at least as Danny DaCosta is a bit younger, 
If I notice that in his um, games, he's not playing the best, uh, making errors defensively. Uh, yeah, someone like Levels uh, would do a bit better than him. Uh, next up, there's Marcus Sutner, who is 28 as well. So, yeah, two 28-year-old fullbacks. Uh, he's from Austria. He looks to have a better ability. And you can see on first look here, he looks more well-rounded. And that's what you want from your fullbacks, especially if you want fullbacks that get forward. And usually I do. He plays for the national team, 14 games, not too bad. Uh, no preferred moves like get forward. You, know, you probably want that if you want him to be uh, actually doing that, getting forward. But that's what good fullbacks generally are like. If they have a lot of these higher attributes, not even high, I mean, just not many lower attributes. And that's what, um, like, if you look at the ones that are lower, what, nine penalty taking doesn't really matter at all. Flair for a fullback doesn't matter. But maybe two others, like positioning and anticipation, more important. Even finishing for a fullback doesn't matter. So you can almost cancel them out. Uh, sure, there's like heading, jumping reach. You want them to be a bit higher because they're, they're defensive attributes. More important for center backs, though. Uh, but yeah, he's pretty well-rounded. Definitely wouldn't intend to sell him unless a good offer came out of nowhere. Uh, one of our players that we have, um, injury, broken toe, uh, Danilo Sares. He is injured for three to five months. So that's a bit of a gap. <laughs> like, is it going to be four months or is it going to be three months or is it going to be five? Uh, would like to know that a bit more clearly. Um, so we know how much he'll miss, uh, like how much of the start of the season he'll miss. No doubt he'll still play a part. He's only 23, got a bit of growth in him. He's quick, not overly pacey, but still the uh, the agility acceleration yeah, is a bit better than his pace. Uh, so that improves that a little bit. That, then that, That's what I talk about, the higher attributes for getting forward. Crossing, dribbling, first touch. Well, his passing's decent, but yeah, better than his. Well, tackling his 13 mark, he's not the best defensive player, but he'll be a force going forward. He could even play left mid or left wing. I'm not really sure what formation I'll go with yet. I'm still analyzing. If you have a suggestion for what formation I'll use, especially as it doesn't look like I make a lot of signings, unless, yeah, we do sell a few, and then we're going to have to work really hard to change up the squad. We'll just have to see what will be the best. But next up, Almog Cohen. Uh, he's actually unavailable to play football due to medical reasons. I'm not ex exactly sure what those medical reasons are. It doesn't say, does it? So, yeah, he's just not able to play, unfortunately. But it's not it's not long-term. He'll be back, you see, what, 18th of the 8th. So, yeah, a few months away. Not to be too concerned about it, as he seems to be one of our... Well, I wouldn't say better by the report and overall ability but in terms of the marking attribute and marks opponents tightly he's one of those yeah really uh, defensive midfielders uh, that like to win the ball back so he could play that role but he's going to be missing so don't worry about him for now uh, we've got a lad from the USA American we've got an American in the team by the name of Alfredo Morales uh, I just want to see his information uh, for a second nationalities um, yeah, he's a Peruvian. He's got... Oh, he's German. See, uh, he's got some other nationalities. Uh, oh, he's been in Germany all his life. Interesting. Interesting. See? Uh, I'm surprised. So he's still listed as American, even though he's been in Germany. Well, maybe not all his life, or ever since, yeah, he's been uh, playing football, even in his younger days. So either way, uh, he looks like a good enough player, but... I don't know if he'll be absolutely amazing. At 25, he's probably not going to improve majorly. And his technicals don't look the greatest. But again, he's more of a teamwork. He's more of a hard worker for the players. He's got the teamwork 16 and work rate 15. So, But yeah, if you really look into his technicals, funnily, technique <laughs> is his best attribute along with first touch. For me, he's not an amazing defensive midfielder or something or even a center mid to create. Uh, he just... If it seems like a guy who'll work hard for the team, but you've got to be technically gifted as well. So we've got to see uh, this guy, Stefan uh, Wannenwetz. Not really sure how to say his name, but he's 23 years old. Again, doesn't seem to have the highest attributes, but these kind of guys are going to have to be part of the first team. And like, <laughs> because we don't have much money. But again, it's the, the teamwork and the work rate. I want to see how that's affected. Maybe these guys will be decent. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. He's got a bit of room to grow because still 23, you can improve as a player. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of centimeter he develops into. And then Pascal Gross, I believe that's how you say the B as I know a few players uh, like Kiesling and Grosskreutz. So I think uh, that's pretty sure how you say his name. Uh, Pascal Gross, who's 24. That's a great age. 
that's a great age because he's established as a first team player. You can see that in his attributes as well. So far, he probably looks at like our best player. A bit lower on the dribbling for a central player, but he's going to be creative. He's finishing his 12, maybe get get forward and score, but yeah, preferred moves as well. You can see places shots, curls ball, Dick takes tempo. So you can see he's going to be that heartbeat for us. He's going to be a guy will probably step up for the most uh, most assists this season, unless the wingers get a lot. He's either footed as well. Uh, could probably still improve slightly as a player. He's not going to be getting worse. He can only get better. But for the most part, he'll stay the same in his quality. Uh, because, yeah, 24, you're not going to progress so much. Next up, we've got a 21-year-old attacking player by the name of Thomas Pledel. He's German, of course. He's got a bit of potential in him. You can see uh, by his maximum potential there, four and a half stars. Got three and a half for the minimum. Uh, he's a center attacking midfielder. Could play as a winger as well. Uh, he's definitely not slow. 14 pace. Ag agility is 16 as well. Uh, acceleration, 15. So he is quicker without being so pacey. So he could play out wide if needed. Maybe inside forward. Again, we still got to see what's going to suit us. He's got a lot of those, yeah, 13s, 15s. got 14s as well. So we train this guy right. Could still improve. He curls the ball. Uh, where what else he's right footed is his left foot weak or how oh it's fairly strong so yeah I was wondering we've got a few players that's either footed so that's basically either footed anyway it should have said that because it's fairly strong and very strong so yeah he looks like another one only 21 that's still very young for the top level like Bundesliga arguably one of the well obviously yeah one of the better leagues in the world like people argue Premier League La Liga won't get into that discussion right now but he's a talent. He's one of those attacking players with a bit of flair about him as well. Good dribbling, can create, hopefully, yeah, score goals as well. Next up, Moritz Hartmann. He's 29, one of the oldest players in the team for attacking player, judging off his ability. Yeah, I'm not too sure about him. Uh, he's got great heading. Again, teamwork and work rate. I'm not sure if a lot of teams, yeah, have those kind of players. I feel as though lower rated teams have that like new, maybe newly promoted teams uh, or like better teams have players with individual quality and we don't seem to have that we have a fairly good overall squad that will play well together um sure it's 15 about average uh, average to good i like to think uh 15 is uh, physically he's okay without being outstanding in one area he's a bit strong but yeah not outstanding on either the strength or pace and finishing composure, uh, yeah, it's like just solid, I guess, 12, 12, not too bad. But he's a guy I'm actually considering to sell. He's been, oh yeah, he's been here for ages. Well, not ages, <laughs> since 2009. And he was playing since, obviously, um, the previous division they were in. And even one year, I'm not sure why that is, he got demoted to the reserve team. But uh, he's always scored goals, He, if you look at his history. Well, I guess that season he only scored one in 16. But, yeah, there's just something about him. He's not absolutely special. So he's a guy I might end up transfer listing because we need money. I want to make some signings. Even though our squad looks pretty big, we don't need to make too many. But we need as much quality as we can get. We need to be picking up points, make sure we don't get relegated. Oh, this guy has a fantastic name. His name is Alias Kachunga. I'm going to have fun saying this guy's name. I hope he's good, though. I hope he smashes in goals. He's 23, so probably he could improve. Probably he could improve. No preferred moves, but he's quick. He's got that 17 pace, the good stamina, natural fitness. But, yeah, he's quick. I'd like that composure to improve, so he's another one uh, that I noticed that early, and we put that in the... Um, yeah, additional focus. Um, initially, this panel is biography, but you don't really need to see biography. Not that important. If I really want to see, I'll go into yeah, like the history and go biography. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, he wants to win a trove and is excited the chance in the yeah, DFB Pokal. It's going to be hard to win the cup, though. <laughs> it's going to be hard to... It's like this. the league. We're going to be... Eventually, if we go far, we can... I'd like to beat teams in lower divisions than us, but when we're playing against another Bundesliga team, it's going to be hard, like the whole season. <laughs> but I'd like to go as further as we can, most definitely. But yeah, Kachunga, I'll definitely give him a chance as I love his name. And the Australian we have in the team, unfortunately, Matthew Leckie has an injury. But because the preseason uh, we have, it'll cut into it a little bit. So it's not as bad as it looks. Same for Danilo Sorez. 
Uh, he's 24 year old for Australian. He he can improve probably slightly. Like those 23, 24 year olds, they won't improve massively, but you can still target a certain area you want to improve. So again, with Lecky, we won't do it right now because he's injured. So he won't yeah target something specifically. <laughs> Wait till he comes back to training and he's fully fit. He's got a contract for two years. He's actually been in Germany for a while. He's actually a Melbourne lad as well, born in Melbourne. Saw him play before he joined Adelaide, actually. He yeah, used to play for Essendon Royals in the um, uh, the, uh, the the local leagues. Um, a lot of you guys probably wouldn't know about that if you just barely know about the A-League. Uh, but yeah, I saw him play a couple of times. Um, I played for Essendon Royals from back in the day. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, moving on now, he he moved on to Germany and he's been there uh, since 2011. Actually, yeah, he, he he actually made an impact. Well, I'm not sure if he actually played well, but he came into the team fairly quickly. A lot of Australian players that move on from the A League, it takes them a while and they don't do so well. But he's, I guess, he's made it in Germany. He stayed there and he's still fairly young. He's 24. He can only get better. I'd like to say he's fairly young because I'm 24 as well. <laughs> I like to think I'm still young, but in footballing terms, he's not going to progress so much as a player. Uh, but yeah, he's composure again. If I'm going to play him as striker, I guess we need to work on that. But he's really quick. He's a guy who's going to run at you. I'd like that to be reflected in the game. Sure, he has the pace, but I think dribbling... Oh, I, know, I, I don't want to be biased, but I feel his dribbling is a bit better. He knows how to get past players. I just hope that can be reflected and he's not just a pacey player in the game. He can actually yeah run and he's got that in his preferred moves like knocks ball past opponent so it's reflected slightly hopefully he can just do it effectively even though maybe he's got what uh, first touch 12 and dribbling 13 oh, to be realistic i'd like to think his first touch would be maybe 13 14 and maybe dribbling would be 15 or maybe could stretch to 16 but again maybe i'm being slightly biased and again it's another guy with 17 work rate Teamwork, not the best 12, but for a winger that likes to do that kind of thing, teamwork 12 is not terrible. It could be lower, uh, really, for that kind of player. Uh, but anyway, next up, we've got Stefan Lex, who's a German 25-year-old. Uh, he's a right winger, naturally can play left wing, could also play striker. But again, a lot of lower attributes. I can see why he might be an all right uh, player for yeah the league below uh, for the previous season. But more than that, and even before then, just a few years ago, he was playing, like, the Bavaria. That's, like, one of the leagues. Again, if I go back to the club and go to the history, that's the only other competition this team has won. And, obviously, yeah, won the league last season in the league below. They have no other achievements. As you can see, they've never... They haven't been in the Bundesliga before. This is the first season in the Bundesliga they've been. So, this is big. This is a big time in the club's history. We're here to, yeah, win new or uh, win new competitions, everything right now. So, we'll just go back. Got a bit sidetracked. But yeah, Stefan Lex, he might be a guy I'll end up selling. He's 2.7 million valued. I think that's slightly overvalued. Uh, he's only a decent player for this league. Maybe he'll be, yeah, I don't know. He looks to have a lot of lower attributes. Um, sure, he's a bit quicker. But crossing 10, I don't think he'll be that good. He's actually a guy I'll consider selling. Maybe could almost stretch to get 3 million for him. And maybe with uh, one of the other players I said I'll sell, maybe we could get around 4 million to 5 million. That could be all right. Anyway, next up is Lucas Hintersees. Striker can also play attacking midfield. 24. See, this is what I like to see in my strikers. He's got a lot of decent attributes. Composure, 10. <laughs> I want to work on that as well. I always find composure really... I always look at finishing and composure for strikers as two key attributes. Composure is like, to me, anyway, it's like the one-on-one, -on -one, one -on one opportunities... And yeah, got to have the ability to take that because I don't want to be wasting those or you'll definitely see me get frustrated. And he's wanted by two clubs, his contract expiring. So I feel as though we should give him a chance this season. I think apart from the composure, he's got attributes in the areas. If we play him in the correct role for him, if it eventually shows his role and duty. Uh, but anyway, yeah, hopefully it does show that. And the final player part of the first team at the minute is Thomas Peckhart. He used to play for Tottenham, didn't he? Yeah, well, he didn't play. Uh, they signed him as a young lad, didn't really break through. I remember him going, yeah, I remember that. I remember him going out on loan to Southampton when they're in, this, uh, in the championship, played a few games. Uh, but then he came back uh, to Czech Republic, 
maybe yeah, he just needed to find himself as a player, and now he's made it to Bundesliga. So he always was going to make it uh, to a top division, um, a good top division as well. And he's 26 now. Unfortunately, though, he's not banging in goals. Hasn't scored a goal. Whoa. And that's only one goal as well. It's been a while since he scored... Uh, like a, a few goals in a season anyway, Nuremberg, yeah, so he did well in Czech Republic, that's why I guess, um, what, uh, what's that, Jablonek, he scored 11 goals in 15, and then um, Sparta Pra signed him, scored 7 in 9, and then obviously uh, Nuremberg, yeah, that caught the interest, and he probably had his best season, that's very interesting, his first season was probably his best, but we can still utilize him as a good target man, even though he's not going to smash, yeah, he's not going to smash in goals, well, maybe he might, he might prove me wrong, he's actually still got one of the best finishing in the team, one of the best finishers still, so he's got that good heading, very, very good heading, jumping reach, strength, so right now, I feel like we might just play a general 4-4-2, get crosses in to a lad like Pekka, and he could, yeah, um, score, <laughs> he can use his head, and that will be a big, uh, that will be a big danger for us, because we've got some wingers as well, but we don't have so many, like, if we get a few injuries here and there, like we do right now, so we've got to keep that in mind, so anyone in the under-19s, that's a decent, there isn't one, like, Ollitz, he's the guy who says he's a hot prospect for the club, but he doesn't look amazing, he's got a lot of, yeah, like, if there's others like him with the same kind of rapport, I don't think they're going to be that good, like, this guy, he's got some decent ones, but there's low ones, like, one crossing, Surely can't be that bad. He surely has to work on the crossing then. One, and long shots, one. Obviously, he's got some good attributes. But I reckon Sports Interactive haven't scouted this guy properly. For me, he has too many 11s. That just looks a bit fishy for me, doesn't it? I don't know. Maybe that's his correct attribute for all of those. But for me, there's too much 11s <laughs> for my liking. But anyway, how about the reserve squad? Anyone of note here? Ooh, how about this guy? Uh, Malthalp. Uh, he's a German, 18-year-old, uh, winger. He could be good enough if you look at his potential. Uh, you see the reports are there uh, for him, as we can't control the training, as he's in the reserve team. Um, yeah, it's not like the Premier League, because there's like other managers. There's like a manager for the reserve team. But anyway, I'm just going to see... I wanted to say, what would I, uh, I just got to work this out. The staff responsibilities, if you go to the under-19s, yeah, or the second team. Yeah, they've got like another manager. Just wanted to make sure of that. So yeah, it's it's like it's the it's a B club. It's a B club. So I reckon we'll just leave those players. But sure, even Michael Zant. Ooh, jumping reach eighteen. Oh, then he's got marking of three. Surely can't be that low. If he's a def if he's a natural centre back and he's got decent attributes, all I reckon that they missed out something there. Unless he's really terrible at marking, I suppose I can't say as I've never seen this guy play. It just seems a bit weird like that. Could even play as a striker, but then finishing only four, maybe a defensive midfielder. But again, mark can be important. And then maybe centre mid, but then passing's only six. But he's young, so you could develop. You just yeah, it's one of those things. But anyway. Uh, that's going to be it for now. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, this introduction uh, episode uh, for my new Football Manager 2016 Let's Play uh, with Ingolstadt. I really, I like the look of this team. Obviously, we're going to have to fight bravely against relegation, like our expectations from the board says in the confidence. But I'm excited. I know. I've already gone into this with expectations. I know we're not going to win every single game. It is going to be a tough season, but I want to do that. Again, uh, like fight. I want to fight bravely. I reckon I can do that. I'm really excited. And if you missed my last Arsenal episode, I did say, yeah, I am going to be recording every single game, uh, two games per episode. But also, I might con consider doing three sometimes. It depends what's going on in the episodes. Like, uh, you'll get maybe a 40-minute or a 50-minute episode. Maybe I'll play three games instead of the two. Uh, but yeah, a lot of you guys will be accustomed to when I would play, yeah, those two games and yeah, like I did in FM15 for the most part, I planned to do that with Arsenal, the only reason I stopped, because I was just dominating, and it, it felt too easy, and another reason, because I was doing those, it was like, it felt the same, I mentioned that in that last Arsenal episode, it felt the same as Manchester United, I didn't want to do, for two years in a row, basically the same save, and yeah, top four Premier League team, 
that's how I felt I wouldn't really achieve a lot. And maybe a lot of you guys might become bored with my videos if I had two main series in Football Manager that were basically the same. And also, I haven't done a main series like this where I would be a lower team in a top league. Even in the Premier League, I haven't done that. I did one in FM13 with Aston Villa. Since FM13, I don't think I have. Nothing, yeah, shouts out at me. But, <laughs> yeah, um, of course, lower league management, but that's different but actually a lower team in a top division. Yeah, I haven't done that for a while, so hopefully you will go on to enjoy this series. Uh, please drop a like, and as I mentioned with how I'll be recording, there should be, once the series gets going anyway, once we're maybe three, four episodes in, I'm going to be looking to upload two episodes per day because recording every single game will allow me to record more episodes um, because then I don't have to like play off camera and that kind of stuff. I can just record everything I'm doing and get a lot of content uh, out to you guys as that's something I always wanted to do and it's almost something I need to do uh, for the for the size of my channel and just in the method I record my videos and the style, I can actually end up uploading three or four videos a day and yeah that's probably what I need to do <laughs> what I need to do as a YouTuber so uh, I do actually watch a few other gaming YouTubers outside of Football Manager and yeah FIFA um, there's a lot of gaming YouTubers and uh, there's some channels out there that just absolutely spam you see some channels they have like over 5,000 videos on their channel and that's what I want to uh, kind of reach um, so you can you know you're going to come to my channel every day and see videos whether you like FIFA or Football Manager hopefully I should be able to get um, yeah both games out every single day uh, so you guys will just enjoy what you're seeing if so you're subscribed for Football Manager which the majority of you guys would be who's watching this video you'll get that but also if you're subscribed for FIFA uh, you'll get that also. So I'm working uh, my best uh, to get towards that. We're also getting towards reaching 100k as well. Thank you very much. And as soon as we can get to 100k, uh, that's when I'll get um, the silver play button from YouTube. And I still can't believe, like basically now it's going to happen for sure. It's just the matter of when, because I'm so close to it. Just like above 4k, over 4,000 subscribers away from it, maybe a month or two months from now it's it's going to happen and i'm not even getting in a lot of subscribers at the minute i'm getting in maybe what like 40 or 50 a day and i'll be predicted to get that in about just under two months so yeah i'm i just gotta thank you so much and i can't wait i'll definitely be doing a special video for that so yeah um i just want to thank you uh very much and this series will be definitely one it will be great if we can yeah surpass surpass the 100k subscribers with this series obviously doing another series as well uh, my other videos with Leeds United, it's almost in a similar fashion uh, with a lower team, but that's, it's still close enough to the top division uh, to succeed. But anyway, I'm going on a bit now. I apologize for that. But if you watch to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. Anyone who spends any time, if you've ever just watched one video of mine and gave me another chance <laughs> like to watch my next video, I appreciate it a lot. Any time you spend watching me because... Uh, that tells me what I'm doing is worth my time. So thank you very much. Just wanted to show my appreciation and to reiterate again. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Hopefully you have a good one. And I'll see you lads next time.